Steve, thank you for joining me today. So when we're talking about a great user experience, what do we actually mean? We all have our own preferences in everything in life, and I think that is you know, carried through also in terms of our desires for what makes a good customer experience. And I think ultimately, it's an experience that maps to our needs, particularly at that moment in time. Um, at a high level, when we talk digitally, we talk about things like simplicity and ease and speed. But I think that you, know, you could just broaden that out and just say um, an honest and transparent experience is kind of where people are, are heading these days. Um, you know, no one likes to feel like you're being made to jump through unnecessary hoops or convoluted processes or that the value exchange in terms of I'm handing over all my kind of information and data for you um, but I'm getting very little in return. So I'm really interested in what you've got to say about um, CX and operations not being isolated, not being siloed, that it's really essential that they're joined up. Are you, are you seeing that? Do they tend to be more disparate or, or, or are businesses generally doing that? I think the connection is is always there. It's you know, it's, it, the two are bolted together. Whether a, a, I think the challenge is, you know, antiquated or inappropriate back office processes, you know, will directly result in a poor customer experience. Um, you know, for me, when I think around customer experience, or just experience we have as consumers um, or customers of, of a brand or service. We are living in a more of a commoditized age where technology and processes, back office systems, if a company elects to engage in, you know, best in class, you know, that, that's almost table stakes. So the real point of differentiation is in how that service is ultimately provided. So I think those tools are going to reduce the perceived barrier or distance between, say, a consumer and, and, and a supplier, your customer and, and, the, and the company that they're using. So they're, they're, they're going to be hugely impactful, but they are not going to be, you know, a sole replacement for you know, the human element of that process um, and, and the importance of that honest uh, relationship that can be born from like a direct human to human contact, even through digital means. I mean, we talk about digital cust customers or digital consumers. Uh, I'm struggling to think in this day and age who isn't a digital consumer. I don't, I don't see that there's a separation of the two. And the human element that you talked about, how important is that? To go to that extra percentage point, and that, 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 that percentage point is the difference between having the customer and not having the customer, you have to differentiate in your service. And I think the human element in that, a human element that's probably supported by these tools, AI, but it's still ultimately, you know, the uh, decision is kind of given over to the human, is, is the point of differentiation. And I think that speaks to uh, a wider, um, desire for people to, after making a decision, to kind of put their trust in an organisation or a company. So trust is a really important one there. And I'd really like to explore that idea of trust in a bit more detail because you're right, it's absolutely essential. How are businesses attempting to build trust with customers nowadays? Um, you're right that it's I think in the past it's been hard to establish meaningful relationships through you know, a digital channel like that, that trust thing because people believe that they're just talking to bots and automation. And very often organizations have, through their CRM tools and whatever means in which they're talking to their customers, actually hidden their best assets behind what seems like a faceless wall. And perhaps, you know, when something goes wrong, and things will always go wrong, you know, frustrations are then kind of ramped up to a next level. But if you've got somebody who's reaching out to you and saying, look, you know, we're real people working behind the scenes that are trying to fix this issue, uh, that level of honesty and authenticity, if you will, goes a long way to, uh, you know, to building that trust and forgiveness, if you are. You know, things are going to go wrong. Imagine I'm the CEO of a business. I know that there's a big disconnect with my customers, CSATs or whatever aren't where I need them to be and customer satisfaction's falling. Where do I begin? What should my priorities be? Um, uh, to, uh, to, to, to the point we made earlier, I mean, a, a, an honest appraisal of where you are now and kind of how you're seen, because very often how an organization sees itself differs quite differently to how their customers see them. And a part of that assessment will be perhaps working in any of those contact centers and seeing how those engagements go you know, happening between kind of customer and, uh, and the organizations to give you an understanding of what's going on. Steve, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure.